What's going on guys? So today I am out here with Opus Off-Road. They make a very unique style of pop-up trailer and it's not necessarily pop-up as much as it is inflatable. But they have a very cool product and I've always been interested in viewing this product in person ever since I saw it in a magazine. So I am out here today taking a look at several of their units and we're going to see what these things are all about. So hang tight. I'll be right back. Alright guys, so I am here with Paul. He is with Opus and he's going to walk us through what makes their pop-ups. I guess you'd call these pop-ups. You would call it a pop-up. What makes these special? Talk us through, I guess, a little bit about your company and then we'll kind of view some of these really, really cool looking trailers you have here. Hi guys, I'm Paul with Opus. Uh, this right here is probably the most unique pop-up you'll find on the market today. Uh, one of the great things about it is it inflates. Uh, we utilize air, pressured air inside of air beams to get the, the camper to pop up. And then what you do is you come over to hit, here to the control board, turn on the power here. You're gonna hit this button. That's gonna fire up the compressor and in about 90 seconds, this tent is gonna inflate, which sets your pack up time, your setup time, sorry, in about five minutes when you include the stabilizer jacks, the pull out stainless steel kitchen, the fridge, grab a beer from the fridge, obviously. And then you're ready to camp, you're ready to go. You and your family are uh, good to hit the slopes, good to go surfing, good to go hiking, biking, kayaking. When this thing is closed down, there is a cargo rack on top so you can pull all your toys with you, any adventure toys, bikes, kayaks, all on top of this unit when it's packed down. And because it's got a low towing profile at about five and a half feet, this thing's super easy to tow. I've never had a complaint about fish tailing. So I have a question for you. Sure. It reads off-road. Yes, Can sir. you go over maybe some of the construction design elements that you've included in to allow this to go truly off-road? Because people that watch my channel, they're going to read that yeah. and they're going to say, well, is it truly off-road capable? This is truly off-road capable. Anywhere your tow vehicle can go, this is going to be able to go. So visually, what we've got here, big R15, mud off-road tires. And then you can see at the back there, maybe you've got dual shock and a single coil suspension. What this doesn't have is an axle. It is independently articulating suspension. So what that'll do is that'll pivot left and right, but keep the vehicle as steady as possible behind your tow vehicle. Then at the back here, we've got this rear departure angle cut out. So that as this is articulating over rough terrain, this back end isn't gonna scrape against the mud here. Comes with a big standard off-road mud tire as a spare. And then over on the front here, what we've got is a lock and roll articulating hitch. Now this is the trailer side. This is gonna pivot left and right. The tow vehicle side clamps over this and it can rotate and go up and down. So you've got 360 control on this hitch here phenomenal makes towing super smooth and then just because we're all about convenience you've got this e-brake on the front as well so as soon as you're parked up crank that e-brake and this trailer isn't going anywhere okay let's talk about some of the numbers in terms of how much this unit weighs and what type of vehicle realistically is designed to tow this so you're probably gonna have to do the conversion in your head because everyone here cares about pounds not Kilograms, so fortunately we're there already. So uh, the the weight on this is about 2870 So you're looking at a, a mid-size family SUV Everything about this is catered to the family. You don't want super GT heavy GT trucks to have to pull this thing So our main market is the off-road overlanding market. So you're looking at Tacomas and forerunners are the main vehicle that pull this thing. I pull it with a Ford Explorer, although I don't do so much heavy duty operating in that. 2870 is the dry weight, 3,500 pounds GVWR. Okay. So it's still very light, even the, even at full GVWR. Absolutely, yeah. Mid-size family SUV is what you want to have in your head. We've got a single propane tank on the front, and this thing does come with a propane heater. 
anecdotally, my customers have told me they've taken this down into 10 degree temperatures. Even with the tent, we overspec the heater, so you can use this thing for all four seasons. Great. What am I looking at hanging off the side here? This right here is the cargo rack. So if you want to put bikes and kayaks, or if you just want to carry 500 pounds worth of gear, this thing sits up at the side when you're camping, but then you'll pull out these safety pins here, and it will pivot over the top of the vehicle oh, when wow. you want to travel. So you've got a very handy cargo rack based on the top of the actual unit here. That is very cool. I would like to show you the underside if that's okay. Absolutely. So I'm just going to crouch you down here. What we've got underneath is we've got stainless steel uh, plating for all of the water tanks. You've got two fresh water tanks, both 20 gallons, so 40 gallons in total. And then this is the suspension I was talking about. Really, this is what's going to carry you off-road year after year, day after day. No axle, dual shock, single coil. This thing is super heavy duty, and you can beat the hell out of this Opus. So I see you have a receiver hitch. I'm assuming it's not for towing, but uh, what type of weight capacities are you rated at? This right here is a recovery point. So if you and your buddies get stuck, this receiver hitch here oh, is wow. going to get you out of trouble. Typically, when people are off-roading, they're going to have a winch mounted on the front mm -hmm. of their unit. You connect it to that hitch point, and then you can drag the Opus out of any trouble. Well, that just kind of shows the off-road capability when you actually have a winching point Absolutely. for your trailer. This thing is really nice. This, to me, even though it is lightweight and it's definitely nowhere near the weight of a certain truck, I think I would love to see something like this behind a Ram Power Wagon. Absolutely. You know, with the capabilities of that truck, it's four... It's four-wheel front-locking, rear-locking differential, and its capabilities hooking something like this up behind it would be kind of a natural fit. And, and one of the appeal, uh, appeals that this camper has is um, not only it's how heavy duty it is, but the actual thought that's gone into the construction. So there's no woodwork um, in the exterior. We use a dye bond aluminum panel, uh, and then some insulation and another dye bond aluminum panel on the interior. So this thing is completely waterproof and weatherproof. And then we use aluminum extrusion so that this thing can take that vibration, that, that beating when you're going off-road. It's a high-performance vehicle that can take the punishment. So you know with confidence when you're hooked up and you're going off-road, this thing's going to be able to handle it. We've got a shower built into the outside as well that is hot water capable. So wherever you go, you can utilize your onboard propane system to give yourself a hot water shower. And over on the kitchen side, got this heavy duty four ring burner stainless steel kitchen. I'm just going to reveal this to you here. Does it come with free styrofoam? It comes with a free styrofoam. Every unit has free styrofoam. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question while you're doing this. Let me. So, anytime I show an off road trailer on my channel, sure. everyone references Australian branded off road trailers and they say there's nothing built that can compete against what's being built in Australia. Do you agree with that? Would you say that yours is a head-to-head -head competitor with some of those Overland brands that you see out in the outback? Uh, I would actually agree with that, yeah. The Aussies are leagues ahead when it comes to off-roading and overlanding. And I know that because uh, one of the owners of our business is in Australia. Opus is actually an international company. We have branches over in the United Kingdom, but Australia, and that's where this came from. It came over from our Australian branch, and they've done some heavy GT testing. It's worthwhile checking out the uh, Opus um, Facebook group over in Australia. Some of the testing they've done with this unit, but also with our two sleeper unit that's just come out, is phenomenal. At one point, they're taking this thing down something known as the old Telegraph Road and they have to do something called the shotgun trail at which point they have to go down a uh, direct incline and the arse of that opus is right up in the air it's phenomenal wow. guys go check it out it's really interesting so my watch. australian viewers are going to instantly go and check that out that's and they're going right. to right. see how it holds up <laughs> i would encourage your american viewers to do it as well if only just for the last it's it's some phenomenal watching so what we've got here with the fabric just to keep this entire unit heavy duty is a 400 grams per square meter poly cotton which means it's breathable so it reduces down condensation but it's also ripstop as well so if for whatever reason you get a tear in this thing the entire thing isn't going to be shredded and then inside we've got vaulted ceiling so you've got eight feet of ceiling height let's, let's get inside and check let's it out get inside 
as you can see here, you've got a huge amount of headroom. Yeah, you do. Now, people might be concerned with the air beams that this thing is going to rock around in the heavy wind. Now, we put 6.5 psi of pressure into this thing, and then to test it, we hovered a helicopter a meter above it to see exactly how it would do, and this thing was rock steady. Those videos are on our website. Go and check it out. Other attack testing we've done is we sprayed it down with a fire hose to see how waterproof it was, sprayed it at the zip lines in all the corners to see how it would do. Not a, not a drop of water was seen inside the unit. And then people are probably concerned about the structural integrity of the air beams. We took one out, we stabbed it with a fork, we ran over it with a truck, and the thing survived. And then we showed you how to patch it as well. All those videos, guys, are on our website. They're excellent viewing. Go and check them out. From an interior perspective, let's kind of go over what your, your train of thought was behind the design. Absolutely. The idea was all family-centric. We wanted to give a comfortable environment for a family of four, potentially even a family of six, if you've got two small kids with you as well, to be able to sit in here and, and interact as a family. So the idea of space and light was really important to us. We've got these skylights and vents up at the top here. All of these panels are unzippable, so you can get a lot of air inside. You've got a double bed on each side, and this will fold down into another small double for two small kids if you needed to. And it feels like it's all marine grade That's right. fabrics. All marine grade leatherette interior. We call it a club lounge. It's got this nice red piping, again, with a, an idea of keeping the aesthetic on the inside lush. So people would want to spend time here. We want to get families excited about this camper. They want to be excited about going off road, and they want to be excited about being inside. And if you can, if you can develop that, their family's going to want to go out anymore. If they want to spend that extra weekend out with their family, extra couple of weekends. That's probably the biggest compliment we could have. So, Paul, I'm going to ask you the hard question, Hit and me. this is the question everybody is going to be asking and, and putting comments about. Sure. What can somebody expect to pay for this model at a dealership? This model, as you see it, is $24,500. There's, um, there's a lot of options that you can build into it. So over on this side here, if we wanted to, it isn't shown, you could have a cinema system. So we build a 50 inch projector screen by 50 inch. You pull it up, it hangs at the top here. You put an HD projector on this table, connect it to the inbuilt stereo system, and you've got a cinema system fit for the family built inside this camper. Propane heaters, air conditioners, and then I've got a couple of awning options that I'd like to go through with you when we jump back outside. You can expect an average cost on this thing to be about $28,000 retail. Okay. MSRP on this baseline model is $24,500. All right, guys, one of the things you may have noticed is the kitchen is in the exterior. It's phenomenal when it's sunny. Obviously, it can rain, particularly here in Indiana, like it did last night. So I would like to show you guys this scene here is where you can zip in a full inflatable annex. So I mentioned before, this camper will inflate inside of 90 seconds. If you wanted to cover this entire kitchen with another room, the same size as this tent, you can zip it onto the exterior and it will cover this entire kitchen. So you can cook in privacy. You can also cook under cover with full ventilation to allow the fumes and the smells from cooking to leave as well. So if you wanted to cook in the colder temperatures, we have that option for you too. And I'd like to quickly go over this control board as well to show you some of the functionality of the unit. What we've got here is a gauge for your front water tank, 20 gallons, rear water tank, 20 gallons, so 40 gallons of fresh water in total. You've got your battery indicator. Uh, so part of the fun here when you're off-road camping is measuring how much power you're going to be utilizing over time. So we've got all the tools you need so that you can camp in this thing for three and a half to four days off-site using the typical Opus setup. It's going to measure how many amps you're pulling, the current health of your battery, and then the total capacity less. You guys have got 200 amps in the battery bank here, both uh, grade four AGM batteries, so we've really over the the, um, the power side of this unit. USB sockets and 110 volt sockets are also built inside. For the 110 volt system, you're gonna need the optional inverter. Everything else is completely um, off-roadable and there is a ZAMP solar hookup so that if you were to use, say, a 140 watt solar panel, you could camp in this thing indefinitely. Wow, that is really amazing. Anyways, Paul, I really appreciate it. This is such a cool, cool, 
pop up. And again, I've seen this in different publications and I've really wanted to spend some time. So I really appreciate you going through this. It looks like you have an incredibly well-built product. Thank you very much. JD, thank you for your time. Great meeting you. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we will talk to you again very soon.